so today I've got a Carverflex 125X Speed, uh, the Mohammed Al Shabagi signature racket, the previous model uh, to what he's using at the moment. This is one of the most common uh, frame shapes on the market at the moment. There are lots of other companies that have a very, very similar shaped head, same stringing pattern. Um, and what makes this uh, a bit different to a lot of uh, rackets is that the mains, after you string the mains, they actually finish at the throat of the racket, uh, which is fine. But that also means that from the long side, you'd need to then string the crosses from the throat or the bottom to the top, the head, so throat to head, um, which is something which personally uh, I'm not a fan of, um, which I'll tell you why in a minute, but also I think professionally, uh, if you were to have your racket restrung by a good professional stringer or an experienced stringer, they would most likely, um, unless out of lays, um, start the cross strings from the head of the racket from this end. Um, there's a very good reason for why uh, you would do this, uh, which some people uh, don't necessarily always buy into, but there's a reason why the, the best stringers do it this way. Um, the reason why you'd string from the head to the throat is the throat is actually the strongest part of the frame. You can see here there's lots of graphite, lots of carbon around here, uh, whereas the hoop the head of the racket is one of the weakest parts of the frame. Uh, not quite so much support as you're going to get at the throat. Um, so what tends to happen is if you string the cross strings from the throat to the head, it's a bit like a kind of balloon. It deforms the frame as you're doing it because you're pulling lots of tension uh, very tightly here. And what happens is it actually pinches the uh, frame in at the base, expands it at the top. And yes, I know it's clamped in, but there's always still some room for movement um, on here, um, especially around here and here. Um, so by the time you actually get here, you're actually putting the finishing kind of tension on here on a slightly deformed shape. So it's not really that good for it. Just keeping your head that kind of balloon, pinching a balloon from the bottom, it's just going to expand at the top. Whereas going from the head downwards, it's a much more even way to spread the tension uh, going down. And um, I guess if you want some proof, uh, the guy who owns this racket, he's a level three squash coach, decent player, um, uh, plenty of skill, very, very fit, uh, but he's also a stringer, so he also strings himself. However, he likes the way I string his racket better than he strings his racket. So when he's in town, he gives me his racket to string, or sometimes his rackets if he's broken a few strings and I get them strung up for him. So um, hopefully that's some kind of proof. And it's because I do it a different way to him. Uh, not everybody knows the fancy around the world uh, methods of stringing. Uh, the one which I'm gonna use today is called the UKRSA um, method, uh, which is tried and tested. A lot of the pro players that use this particular racket, if they go to a tournament and there's a decent stringer there, um, it's most likely gonna be um, one of the patterns which will be strung on something like a Carboflex or some of the Dunlop brackets or even some of the eye rackets as well uh, which have similar shape frames on them. Um, so without further ado I'll get cracking. Um, just one other thing to note so I'm actually going to use this side as my short side this side as my long side. Normally I'd have it the other way around um, but what I like to do especially with this guy I know him quite well is I like to alternate the short and the long side when I'm stringing, uh, just to give the grommets a bit of a break when you're tying off the grommets um, here. Just evens it out, prolongs prolongs the uh, the longevity of them a little bit as well, which I think is only gonna be a good thing. Um, but if you wanna have the short side on this side, just flip it around. There are some rackets like Dunlops, which will have the kind of hidden slots on the outside of the uh, hoop, especially in down here, where you actually have to string the short side on a certain side and the long side on another side because otherwise it just doesn't match up and you get loops going all the way around uh, over the uh, grommet strips on the outside. But this particular racket is universal. You can have it either way. Um, but the reason why I'm doing short side this side and long side this side is purely to just look after some of these tie off grommets. Just gives it gives the others a little bit of a rest. So anyway, 26 pounds on this one with Ashaway Ultra Neck and 
let's get going. So not using an anchor, not using the starting clamp um, on here, just because quite frankly, there's not enough tension going through. If it was tennis, I, I nearly always with tennis rackets use the starting clamp to back this one up just to give it a bit of release. Um, I've got my camera angled at a different angle tonight. Um, there's a very good reason for that. It's just to give a little bit more of a bird's eye view of the actual racket itself. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stringing three ahead to start with, then two ahead on the mains thereafter. Just trying to preserve the frame. It's okay to do three ahead right at the start. Uh, sorry, to do three um, pulls right at the start, just because you're still fairly central to the frame itself. And as you've probably seen in some of my other videos, what I'm going to do now is just thread this one through. I'm not going to tension this fourth string now because I want to keep the tension going nice and even through the middle. Um, with a lot of the Ashway strings, such as the Ultronic and the Powernick, they're not quite as elastic as some. So I always break off a little bit more string than I would do for say Technofiber, uh, well, all the Technofiber range really, just because they won't stretch quite as much. So Technofiber strings, I'd normally use about five and a little bits worth of arm span lengths, um, worth of string on a one piece job on this racket. And that's um, just over six foot, about six foot one-ish. Um, so I've got fairly long, long arms, but if you just go by that basis. So for this string, for the Ashway Ultranic that I'm using here, I use five and a half arm spans. So for somebody maybe without my arm span, it'd be probably five and three quarter arm spans worth. So as you can see here, what I'm actually doing, so I've tensioned four strings. I'm gonna tension the fifth string here. So we tensioned three on that side. So so I'm stringing two, tension two ahead rather. I'm also leaving myself just a little bit of room on the mains, on the cross strings. And again, it's important that as long as you're consistent with how you do it, then it's fine. Um, I always like to leave a little bit of room, especially with the Ashway strings, so I'm not pinching them too close on the main strings. Right, so I'm not gonna actually tension that, I'm just gonna pull it through. We move back over to the other side and you see because I've pulled because I've just placed the string through there it's just nice and quick nice and quick and easy it just saves me from having to go back and doing it all over again and with the around the world pattern which I'm going to be doing to start with I'm only going to actually tension six strings on each side in the short side and long side six of six mains on each side so effectively 12 main strings um on the carbon flexes just under here you will get some little kind of uh ridges to guide where the strings are going to go i generally like to go over the top on that side and here i'm going to use my starting clamp with a panel pad just to look after the frame and the strings a little bit more. Because I'm gonna need this clamp in a minute. So I've done six strings on this side, on my short side. And here, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of extra space. And again, the reason for that is I've done six strings on both sides, but I'm gonna need some extra room because I'm gonna be coming down here. Okay, so we're going to miss the first cross. So normally the first cross would go there, but because we're going to come back up and do that one afterwards, and go down to what would normally be the second cross. One good thing about doing this way as well, actually, is that you don't get tension loss in a minute because what you'll actually do is you'll be tensioning the two mains with crosses to do either up here or down here. So you avoid that situation where you get left with an embarrassing bit of looser string on the outside. Uh, obviously, you don't want that really. You want the 
tend to, you want the string bed to be as even as possible. So it's just remembering you will have strings that come up here at the end. But I guess one thing to consider is just because you're doing slightly fancier stringing pattern on here, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to take ages and ages and ages. I can probably string one of these rackets just as quickly as a normal racket. I mean, obviously I'm talking through at the moment, so I'm not going through it mega, mega quick. Um, another thing with the Ashway strings as well, especially as you get a bit lower down and the string bed gets a bit tighter, just look after those strings, feed them through pretty well because you don't want to burn the strings because ashway strings are generally a little bit more grainy a little bit more texture than technical fiber for example so they do have a tendency to burn strings um, my usual method of just stringing one ahead on the cross is not pulling one ahead but just string them on ahead. Just saves a bit of time, it's less friction to go through, so it looks after the string that you're pulling and tensioning. But you only have a pulling one string at a time. Because I've got my camera rigged up here just above. Just I'm going to stand back a little bit from the machine as I'm doing this as well, so I'm just being careful. Oops, getting that loose bit of string course up there. So one of the advantages of doing it this way is that you get a much, much um, better feeling sweet spot in my opinion. And again, those, those who've tried both ways with the strung crosses to top or crosses to bottom, I don't think I've had anyone yet that's preferred having the crosses strung bottom to top and I've done a few a few kind of blind testers on people and they can notice the difference. Again, depends on what level player you are really. Uh, depends on sometimes what string you've got. But a decent player will generally be able to feel the difference. And as I said, this is for a level three coach who's an accomplished player and can definitely feel that difference. So I'm not going to do any kind of speeding up on this one or anything. I'm just going to go through at a reasonable pace whilst I'm talking. Just so you can see that it doesn't take forever to do. I think it's sometimes quite nice to just see the whole job being done in one go. Because the downside is it means you've got 15, 20 minutes of listening to me drone on whilst I'm singing. I shouldn't say singing then. Definitely don't want to hear me singing. I'm a terrible singer. So I've got the camera mount on here. It's actually sometimes quite difficult to negotiate my way around it when I'm stringing. So get my hands in some slightly awkward positions. Which is one of the reasons why you see me do two different styles. I'm trying not to spin the table around too much where possible. One of the things with the Technofiber rackets, I always liken the Carboflex to the Porsche 911 for those who like their cars, really because they don't 
totally reinvent the racket every time they bring out a new model. What they do is they just make subtle changes. So it might be the colorway. It might be adding some ridges in or some bumps. Might be doing a whole, whole number of things, but uh, they don't drastically change the actual makeup. And that's kind of evident. There's still actually a few professional squash players on the tour who still use this racket because they do re-release them like the Heritage, the Cannonball, which is obviously a version of this, and this racket. So what I've done now is I'm going to stop on these crosses for now and I'm going to put through the last main on the long side using the long side piece of string. And to do that, you skip the next cross grommet and you'll see the last main grommet just here. So you go through there and then you weave, so you get under, whoops, so to the eagle eye you might actually just spot. So this is one of those things, I'll leave this in there, I'm not going to do any editing, because concentrate on talking. Uh, what I've actually done is I've actually over, <laughs> we overweaved three strings there, unbelievably. So I'm going to take that out, that almost never happens with me, but hey, strings we all make a few mistakes every now and again but luckily when you're paying attention and not talking you see what you're doing that's the important thing is just make sure when you're stringing that if you make a little mistake or a big mistake you go back and correct it straight away so as you can see i'm just weaving up and down here that comes to the last so i'm not sure if you can see it but this is the last main hole. And I'm putting it really slowly through here because I can't really shift the string up and down to save burning. So I'm just going to put it through slowly. This is clamp. So I clamp it off here. And I'm going to forget about that side for a little bit. So remember, this is still the long side string. And I'm going to come back to the short side here. Re pull the tension, carefully take a clamp off. So not to damage the string. Put this up here. Now what I could do is I could actually just stick the starting clamp back on there now, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to retension that in a minute and then put the starting clamp on there. So now what I'm doing opposite to what I did here, I'm using the short side to come down and remember what I said before about normally the short side being on the other side, but I'm just looking after the grommets a little bit, so I've switched it around. I'm just weaving this down here, put it into the last main hole, so skipping that last cross there. Tension that. Now I'm going to come back up to the top and just thread this last one through here. I'm not going to pull tension or anything like that. I'm doing this now just because we're going to need this clamp back to do the rest of the crosses down here. But this is why we left the last, uh, sorry, the first cross grommets free at the top. You can do this one over on this side. So I've got two or three starting clamps, so I'm pretty much up to capacity with starting clamps. So personally, sometimes I would actually just clamp it off there after I've tensioned that and leave it all, to, all till the end. Um, but I know a lot of stringers may not have the luxury of having more than one starting clamp. So that's why I'm just going to keep that in place and I'll tie the tension off at the end. So now, We've got two free clamps here. I'm going to go back up through here. And again, making sure you go under and over the right way. And 
just make sure when you're putting it through that you're not going to be leaving any cross it, crossovers and the lips on the outside. Because the string is a little bit shorter now, I haven't got room to, or I haven't got enough string rather to string one I had on here. So I'm just tensioning each one as I go and then weaving through on the others. Obviously not quite as much space now, so you have to be a little bit more careful when you're going through. Again, just checking where the little guiding pips are on the outside of the frame here. Do you want to look neat on the outside as well as on the inside as well? So in this case, so we're going to go onto that one. So that's the last cross on this racket. Um, for the eagle eye views, normally what I do is I actually pull, I'll tell you what, actually, I'm gonna get this one a little bit closer to the frame. I think I'd normally, there we go. What I'd normally do is pull uh, a little bit of extra tension on that, but to be honest, on the top and the bottom, it's not quite so imp important. Certainly on the side strings it is to add a little bit of extra tension. Um, but because I've clamped it really close to the frame there, which you're able to do on this, I don't really need to up the tension on there because there's, there's a very, very small gap, so it's not really going to lose any tension whatsoever. So finish off with a parnel lock. Again, I'm just going to do it by hand, get a nice tug, close that loop up, keep hold of it. As you release the clamps, snip it. I don't like having long tails, just a nice, reasonable sized tail on there. It just looks a bit neater pointing up. And now we're going to finish off by tying off the one at the top. So, tail actually. Place we can get that. So this string, the Ashaway Ultra Nick, actually works pretty well in the Carboflex racket. It's one of the better strings actually to go in this. I mean, I personally, I'm a Technofiber guy when it comes to my strings. I prefer Technofiber, but out of all the Ashway strings, this is certainly one of my favourite ones if I was going to choose to go elsewhere. Right. So that is pretty much a bracket strung in about 18 19 minutes if you take the talking off at the beginning. So all those the crosses are fairly straight. Just going to finish off by making sure they're perfectly straight at the end. Nothing worse than lopsided strings. And another advantage of the method which I've used to string with now, and I'll show you in a minute when I take the racket off, is that the actual loops on the outside of the racket considerably shorter stringing using this around the world method than there would be if you were to string in the regular factory method which would be crosses top to, uh, bottom to top rather so much better for tension maintenance and aesthetically I think it looks much better as well so I'll just quickly hold the racket up so you can see what I mean so as you can probably see, really, really nice and neat. So no strings crossed over. Um, normally what you'd have is you'd have a tie-off hole 
which would have a loop kind of go. So by the way, just another thing as well, there's two potential tire holes uh, here, one there, one there. So the last cross is there, so I've gone the shortest one possible, again, reducing the loop. So normally what you have is you actually have a loop that goes all the way up here to that last main. So there's a whole great big area there where you can lose a bit of tension. Then if you look at the top, again, it's nice and neat. No great big long holes. I think next time I string this racket, I think it's going to need bumper time as well. So just quickly by hand, just quick checking a few of the strings that could do the straightening. That's looking pretty cool.